Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kedis Rivatsepativada, and I want to tell you a little bit about myself. I love football, but I'm not too good at playing it. I love TEDx talks, but it's my first time giving one. And I also really, really love hiking. Or, well, at least I used to. It all started in the summer of 2019, when I decided to go on a 30-day expedition trip to Alaska, and I decided to, to, to succeed. It was a four-week expedition, and my first week there, I was offered to summit a peak, a prestigious offer, so I decided I should take it. It was only 800 feet of elevation gain, so I decided how hard could it be. So I began my journey. Excited to reach the peak that seemed so close, yet so far, I decided I was going to make it. And then I took 10 more steps, and I received my first asthma attack in over six years. I fell down to my knees with tears in my eyes, I didn't know what to do. The whole trip would have been pointless, would have not been a success if I decided that I could not summon peaks anymore. So I waited. I stayed at camp and I cooked some food. I know my parents are in the crowd having a hard time believing that, but I promise you, it's true. But then week three came by and I decided I was going to summit the next peak. I had another opportunity given to me, to summit a peak of higher elevation, 1,800 feet of elevation gain, 2,000 feet above sea level. I was excited, but I knew I could not complete it. My lungs wouldn't let me, my feet wouldn't let me, I realized there was no point trying. And that's when Spencer put his arm on my shoulder and said, I have to do it. He said the view up there is to die for, and it's an experience that I will never, ever forget. So I decided to embark on this journey. Not knowing what would happen, I, I decided with a positive mindset I could do anything I put my head to. So I continued, one step at a time, one breath at a time. I decided I was going to reach this peak no matter what. I put my mind to it, and every single muscle in my bone was dedicated to reaching this peak. So I continued. Against the rocky surface, the rain and the air, I decided I was going to reach this peak. One more step, and I realized I was wrong. I had my second asthma attack in over six years. Alaska was really breaking records at this point. I decided that I could not continue. I dropped to my knees, and there was something in my eyes. I wasn't sure if it was rain or tears, and none of you will ever find out. But I decided I had to continue. I took another step, but that's when it all came crashing down. I fell to my knees once again. I was crying this time, and I'll be honest about it. Spencer came up to me, put his hand on my shoulder, and said, you have to climb the peak. He said, you've got no option, and that view up there is to die for. I held Spencer by the collar, and I decided to say, I know you're talking about a metaphor, but I am literally dying, Spencer. Uh, Spencer doesn't come back for a while in that story. He was kind of frightened by that. I step away from Spencer, and then I close my eyes. A sudden thought comes to me. I realize I paid so much money for this trip, but so much of my time on this trip, I decided I had to climb that peak. I decided that that peak was the only way I would reach success. It's the only way this trip would be worth it. It's the only way I would be successful. So I continued and continued, one step at a time, one breath at a time. With 25 kgs on my back, there was nothing that could stop me. I kept going and going, and I knew I could not stop. And that's when I reached the top. I reached the top, and I felt ecstatic. I, had a I was in a state of euphoria that I will never forget. But then something happened. See, in this picture, I felt like I owned the world. I was looking over the whole, the whole Alaska beneath me, and I was excited. But I'm, I'm still bowing my head. You might wonder why that is. That's when I took out my journal and decided to write a short, a short saying. I wrote, I just summited my first peak. I risked my life, beat all odds, and summited my first peak. But guess what I got in return? 10 minutes of happiness. 10 minutes. This is when I decided that the peak is not the true point of success. Your success does not depend on the altitude you're on, but it depends on your true, your true subjective opinion of success. Success was dependent on you and only you, and no Spencer in the world can tell you what that point of success is. That's when I continue to write. I wrote, Kudus, find your own point of success. Whether it be at the base or the peak, realize your goals are paramount to your success, and the altitude above sea level does not determine that. I was inspired by myself, and I know that might sound cocky, but I realized this was the only way to proceed forward. So I went home, 
and I divided my goals into career and personal. My career goals included being head boy, being a good job when I grow up. My subjective goals included spending more time with my family, spending more time with my friends. But then I decided this wasn't good enough, so I further classified my goals into objective and subjective. My objective goals were what society had concocted for me. It was the title I should have when I grow up. It was the salary I should have when I grow up. It was the retirement savings I should have at the age of 60. But my subjective goals are what really kept tugging at me. My subjective goals said I should spend more time with my family. My subjective goals included going to more concerts, doing things that would truly make me self-fulfilled, but yet I should still achieve my objective goals. Too many people in this world are only focused on reaching objective goals, and this life is too short to focus on that. Your subjective goals only determine what your objective goals mean to you. Your objective goals are nothing without being subjective. Focus on the inner feeling you have, and truly every success that comes will depend on that. And I'm not trying to sell you a psychoanalytic study. I'm not trying to sell you an experiment. I'm trying to sell you personal experience. At the age of 11, I had my first app on the App Store. At the age of 14, I was national champion of the UAE for fencing. At the age of 16, I'm developing businesses. But yet, I wasn't truly self-fulfilled. Last weekend, I went to a concert, and I felt a moment of self-fulfillment more than I had when I was achieving those achievements. Now, granted, these achievements mean a lot to me. They mean the world to me. But realizing that they are worth nothing without the subjective goals that come underneath them is paramount to success. Ladies and gentlemen, you may be at the peak, you may be at the base, you may be on a different mountain, but it does not matter where you are. Success can be achieved at any point of a mountain. This is a lesson I learned not only in hiking, but in life itself. Ladies and gentlemen, write down your objective goals, write down your subjective goals, classify them so you can have a clear vision of where you're trying to go. Don't wait for the future, create it. Thank you.